All right, so this is Griffiths Electrodynamics, problem 4.20. Uh, what we've got now is another one of our classic sphere problems. This one is a sphere of linear dielectric. All right, and it has also a free charge density equally distributed, uh, a, a uniform free charge density of rho. All right, and it has a permittivity of epsilon. <laughs> Let me write that out down here. This is a uh, linear dielectric, so the permittivity is just equal to this dielectric constant multiplied by the permittivity of free space. All right, so in the end, we're going to be trying to get things into terms of this uh, dielectric constant right here. Of course, it has a radius of big R. And our question is, what is the potential at the center of this sphere relative to infinity? So uh, we're going to just find the electric field. and to do that, we'll be using Gauss's law in both forms with uh, the displacement as well as the electric field. So for the outside of the sphere, that is for R greater than big R outside, uh, there's no dielectric out here. And we can just use the Gauss's law with the electric field. Right, so as usual, this uh, uh, integral here will give us the product of the magnitude of the electric field multiplied by the surface area of a sphere, in this case 4 pi big R squared because we are outside. Oh, excuse me, no, this is a small r squared right here, little r squared. All right, this is the radius, the surface area of our Gaussian surface, which is way out here at small r larger than big R. OK, it's the Q enclosed where we use our big R, because once we're outside the sphere, uh, all we care about is the volume of the sphere itself, not the volume of our Gaussian surface. So we have our 1 over the permittivity of free space. And then we are multi to get this charge enclosed, we'll multiply the charge density, rho, by the volume of this, the dielectric sphere itself, which is 4 thirds pi big R cubed. Oops. OK. All right. So uh, we can find the magnitude of our electric field uh, by dividing both sides by 4, dividing both sides by pi and then dividing both sides by r squared. So that gives us a rho big R cubed over uh, epsilon naught little r squared. And to make this a vector, uh, just due to spherical symmetry, we know that that is in the r hat direction. So here is our E field outside. All right, out right there to remind us. Inside, that is for small r less than big R. Now we're going, now we're inside uh, the dielectric itself and we'll use the displacement field. So now it's a D dotted with a dA. And <coughs> rather than the total charge enclosed divided by permittivity of free space, all we, <coughs> excuse me, all we need here is the enclosed free charge. So we put a little f there. Um, the enclosed free charge is just from this uh, row. right? So just following what we did above, what we get the magnitude of d times 4 pi. Now this time our Gaussian surface is inside of our dielectric sphere. That's smaller than big R. So we will have, when we, when we, when we have the uh, surface area of our Gaussian surface, now it's a 4 pi. Well, OK, fine. Again, it's a 4 pi small r squared. It's always a small r on that side, right? But on the other side, we'll also have a small r. 
uh, because to get the enclosed free charge, it's just the volume, this time of just our Gaussian surface, 4 thirds pi little r cubed. All right, and then, uh, so that's the volume, and multiplying by the volume free charge density rho, we get the total free charge enclosed in our Gaussian surface. This gives us a magnitude of the electric displacement. Uh, now we divide, of course, by 4 pi, and we divide by r squared. That gives us uh, excuse me, an r, one r left over. We have our rho, and then we have a 3. Or if we want to convert this to a vector, again, due to the symmetry, we, it's just in the r hat direction. All right, so now let's find the E field, um, which is uh, uh, from this displacement here. Um, because it's a linear dielectric, let's just write this out really quick. Uh, remember that the electric displacement is defined as permittivity of free space multiplied by this uh, electric field plus the polarization. Well, for a linear dielectric, uh, this polarization is proportional to E as well. All right, and that is the electric susceptibility multiplied by the permittivity of free space multiplied by the electric field. For a linear dielectric, this term is the polarization. So we can factor out this epsilon naught and we have a 1 plus the electric susceptibility. And then there's our E. All right, this term we call the dielectric constant, E sub r. All right, or uh, this E sub r multiplied by the permittivity of free space just gives us the permittivity of the material. So let me write this D again, it's just equal to this permittivity multiplied by this electric field. All right, so to find the electric field from this displacement, what we found already, we just divide by the permittivity. So inside the sphere, we just have this divided by permittivity. So r rho over 3 times the permittivity in the r hat direction. So here's the electric field on the inside. Here's the electric field on the outside. And now we can go ahead and do our integral to find the potential. So potential, we have a minus out you know, from infinity out to, uh, um, to zero where we want to find, remember we want to find the potential relative to infinity at the center of the sphere, which is zero, the origin of our coordinate system. We have an E dot DL. And this E is not the same whether we're, uh, depending on whether we're inside the sphere or outside the sphere. That's what we just found. There were two different E's, E in and E out. And so we are going to split this into two different integrals. One from infinity to r of e out dotted into our uh, dr. So here's e out. Let's go ahead and write this as we go. We have our rho. We have our big r cubed. We have epsilon naught. We have r little r squared on the bottom, and then uh, dr. When we dot into this uh, dl in spherical coordinates, we get a, a dr. All right. Now we need our second piece, and this time we're going from r to zero. <coughs> this time we're using our en right here. So just plugging this in. We have a row, we have a small r, we have a 3 epsilon 
and then uh, we just have a dr uh, from this dot product right here. Here's our integral. We can go ahead and work this out now. Uh, I'll keep our minus sign. We have a row. Bring some of these constants out front. All right, the integral of 1 over r squared is just a minus 1 over r. And that is evaluated from infinity. Let me put parentheses around this so we keep our minus sign straight. That's evaluated from infinity to r. And our other one, bringing the constants out front again, rho over 3 epsilon. Uh, the integral of r is an r squared over 2. And this is evaluated big R to 0. So let's go ahead and keep on going. We, uh, hmm, what should we do here? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's show all our steps. So uh, this minus sign is going to cancel with that minus sign. Rho R cubed over epsilon naught. All right, uh, where were we? We had uh, this, yeah, this one over r, and then our second term will be a one over infinity, which gives us zero. And then we have minus uh, this term evaluated at zero, which is just zero because of this r right here. And then minus minus, so a plus rho big R squared, plugging in this big R in here, over six epsilon. And remember, I guess we wanted everything to be in terms of the dielectric constant right here, rather than the permittivity. So we can go ahead and uh, call epsilon the dielectric constant multiplied by permittivity of free space. So factoring some stuff out. Well, one, for one thing, this r is going to cancel with one of those up there. So we can factor out this row. And we can factor out this r squared. Uh, we can also factor out this epsilon naught on the bottom. And what do we have now? We have one plus, uh, what's left? We have a one over six times this dielectric constant. All right, um, is that, did I drop something? I may have dropped something. All right, yeah, turns out I dropped something way back when. This is way back when we were finding the outside. See this three right here? I left that off. So I'm putting a, a three right here, and then I'm going to um, find where that went wrong earlier on. This was outside. Oh, gee, what a mess. So here's a 3 here, a 3 here, and a 3 here, and a 3 here. All right, we always make a mistake, but here we go. Um, so, I mean, if we want to, we can factor out this 3, since uh, 6 is divisible by 3, 2. That might be might be good. We have a 1 and then plus 1 over 2 times the dielectric constant. All right, now we're on the right track. So here is our potential at the center relative to infinity. And um, if you'll look back at like problem 2.21, we solved this for uh, a sphere of uniform volume charge. And if you do the whole conversion with Qs and rows and everything, what you'll see is you get the same answer, but without this uh, dielectric constant here. So it's just a, a 1 plus 1 half if, if we didn't have, uh, if we only had the volume charge without the, uh, the dielectric constant, which I guess makes sense, <coughs> right? Because our dielectric constant just um, if you think of a capacitor, right, the electric field inside the capacitor is just decreased by a factor of the, the dielectric constant. So, um, and since this is the term relating to 
the electric field inside our dielectric, that would make sense that the electric field is decreased. Therefore, that affects the uh, potential as well. So I, I think this result makes uh, good sense uh, with respect to what we've done before.